Welcome back guys. Today I'll be covering removal and installation of bearings. Now this could be on crankcases, suspension components, wheel bearings, linkages, you name it. And basically all you need is a few simple things and some knowledge about expansion and contraction. Here we have a set of crankcases off a Suzuki RM250 and I've already popped the bearings out. I covered that in a video a few weeks ago. And I'll actually drop those clips in this video for you guys that haven't seen it. So why don't we start with that? How I'm gonna do this is by dropping the crankcases and I believe there's a bearing on this cover too. Yep, drop them in the oven over here at 350 degrees, heat them up for about a half hour. And how this is gonna work is the aluminum, which the cases are made of, expands at a faster rate than the steel. That is the material of the bearings and those bearings should just drop right out. So this method is a lot less damaging and a lot less stressful in the crankcases compared to just hammering them out. Now, before I get started, I'm gonna pull out the stopper plates that hold the bearings in place. Looks like I got a few on this case too. Before you pop out those bearings, you wanna make note of which way the bearings are facing. You can see this one has a seal on this side. Other side does not. Same with this one here. On the other crankcase, one thing to make note of is this bearing has a lip on it. See right around the edge of it. So that way it's held in with those stopper plates. We've got some aluminum foil laid down inside the oven here to catch those bearings as they start to drop out. All right, let's give her 30 minutes, see what happens. I just heard a loud clunk in the oven. I think these bearings are starting to fall out. Oh yeah, counter shaft one popped out already. Let's see how this right case is looking. Oh, two bearings sitting there. Should be able to just pop those ones out with a little tap. That is freaking sweet. Got one more bearing right here. Ooh, this is hot. Sometimes if you just pick it up and drop it, bearing will come out. Yeah, we're gonna have to use a puller on that one. Just like butter. Wow. Yeah, that method works pretty dang good. That'll save you from a lot of hassle and potential damage to your cases. The bearings for the clutch arm, which are usually way down inside that hole, I've already got them out, but I was able to pull those out with the blind bearing puller. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up one of these pullers, they're super handy for crankcases, wheel bearings, linkage bearings, anything like that. Super handy to have, but I will link it down below. All right, time to pop some fresh bearings in for the transmission bearings. I'm going with hot rods. This is a pretty complete kit. Comes with all the bearings except for the crankshaft main bearings. I picked up this kit from Rocky Mountain. Now for the main bearings, I would highly, highly recommend going with OEM. These are genuine Suzuki, also from Rocky Mountain. Pretty important to have a high quality bearing for the crankshaft. Now for installing the bearings, we're gonna use a pretty similar method as we use for removing them. We're gonna heat up the crankcase, cool down the bearing. That'll expand the crankcase, the aluminum, and shrink the bearing. And those will just drop right in now, the coating I applied on the crankcases is a Cerakote Clear MC5100. It's good up to 400. So I'm gonna heat these cases up to 300 over in the oven. And then for the bearing, I'm gonna place it on some dry ice, which you can get at pretty much any uh, grocery store. And that'll really cool it down. And those will just pop right in. So I'm gonna start with the right case. And before I begin, I need to make sure I know which way these bearings are going in. This is where it'd be handy to have before pictures for the crankshaft main bearings. They can go either way. They're the same on either side, but one side has some markings and I always like to have those facing in. Now for the tranny bearings, some have a seal on one side, nothing on the other. So you definitely wanna make sure you know the orientation before you start heating things up. So while that crankcase is heating up in the oven, I'm going to cool down the bearings. So I'm gonna put the bearings in a Ziploc bag along with the dry ice here. This is like $2 worth of ice at the grocery store. And make sure those bearings are in direct contact with the ice, that'll cool them down really quick. And also, you wanna have a hammer and a setup to uh, help punch those bearings in in case they don't go in right away. Thank you. 
That is so weird. Do you guys hear that? Those bearings are just squealing inside of there. Must be uh, cooling down pretty quick. All right, the case is up to temp. We are gonna have to move pretty quickly here. So we're gonna start with the main bearing. Line it up, make sure we're going in straight. Dropped right in. Give her a little tap just to make sure. We've got the tranny bearings now. That one dropped right in. She's seated. Let's see, we've got another one right here. We've got one more. And this one goes with the seal facing toward the inside. All right, that was pretty simple. And you don't want to forget those retaining clips that hold the bearings in place. Pop those in as soon as you can. Also, with the temperature difference in the bearing and the crankcase, you're going to end up with some condensation. So I'd recommend throwing in some gear oil or whatever oil you're using in the engine. Got some here in this little bottle. Going to squirt it in, work it in. So that way we stay rust free. Now for the retainer screws, you want to make 100% sure you throw some blue or red Loctite on them. You don't want those things coming loose. All right, let's get to work on the left case. First up is the main bearing. That thing just popped right in. This freaking spacer won't stay in. I'm gonna have to clamp it in. Oh boy. This thing's gonna need some help. Yeah, I think just didn't want to go in straight, so it needed a little extra help there. Now for the countershaft bearing, you want to make sure this little lip is facing out. That is for the retaining clips. Try to get this thing in straight. Always helps to have a nice set of long needle nose. All right, we're just gonna have to whack on it here. All right, all the bearings are in and seated, lubed up, ready to go. Got the retaining clips in. Now the needle bearings are the tough ones to get in. There's really no easy way to get those in. You just gotta cool them as much as you can and uh, pretty much just have to resort to tapping them in. Now on the right case, I missed one bearing here. That is for the governor shaft. The hot rods kit didn't come with it, so I'm gonna have to buy that OEM and pop that in later. Probably what I'll do is just heat up the case with the torch, put the bearing on dry ice, and it should just slide right in. Now, if you guys don't have a dedicated oven for this stuff, you can use the torch to heat up the case, although you might run into some warping issues, and then just pop your bearings in your regular freezer. That should create a big enough temperature difference to just drop those bearings in. Although, heating the case up in the oven and using dry ice for the bearings makes a huge, huge difference. Now, with all the bearings in, it's a good time to pop in some seals as well. So I'm gonna pop in the counter shaft, shift shaft, uh, clutch arm seals. I'm gonna wait to do the crank seal a little later. I might need to heat up that bearing to help slide that crank through. Now for seals, I've got Tusk brand from Rocky Mountain. Should be the entire oil seal kit. Now this is a very budget friendly option, really good on the wallet, and they are great quality as well. So let's test them out. And actually for the crank seals, I decided to go with OEM Suzuki as well. A dab a little oil on the outside of the seal here. Help us slide into place a little easier. And I'm only gonna push these in until they are level with the surface of the case. You can use a block of wood to help level them out. Seat them all the way. Move over to the shift shaft seal. Man, this bottle is pretty handy. Allows you to just squirt out a little bit of oil at a time. I forget what they're even called, I found it on Amazon. It's called like a, uh, something to do with like RC cars, I believe. Sweet. Those things went in pretty smooth. Now, something I just noticed with these seals is they are stamped SKF on the side. I don't know if you guys can see that or not right there. So it's actually an SKF seal in a Tusk package, which is a great thing. Every SKF seal I've ever used has been just absolute quality, so that is a great sign. So that's pretty much it for the cases for today. Now the next video you guys will see on the channel is of starting the engine buildup. I don't know if I've shown you guys this yet, but I got the crank back. 
This is the OEM crank with a Pro X rod kit. So it has a uh, new rod, new bearings, all that. I sent this out to Crankworks in Arizona. They went through, rebuilt it, trued it up, so it's all ready to go. So I'll be installing the crank, transmission, clutch stuff, just starting the engine build. So guys, stay tuned. I got a lot of cool stuff coming your way soon. Now for all you guys that are new to the channel or new to this build, the ARM250 project, I am actually giving this bike away completely free when it's all finished up. All you have to do is go down below in the description, click that first link, enter your info. You don't have to buy anything. There's no crazy sign up plan, just straight up giving the bike away. So guys, if you have not signed up yet, definitely go down below and click that link. And for you guys that have entered the Team Prime Bike Build Contest, I have some news regarding that. So with all this crazy stuff regarding the virus, I've decided to extend the contest an extra month. Originally, the build date or the uh, due date was April 15th. I have moved it to May 15th just to help you guys out a little bit. I know it's been tough with uh, travel restrictions, trying to source parts. Some of you guys are out of work. So hopefully this helps you out a little bit. And if you're stuck at home for the next few weeks, it'd be a perfect opportunity to spend some extra time with your bike, uh, do some wrenching on it in the shop, go riding. I know I'll be camped out in the shop for the next few weeks. But anyways, stay healthy guys and stay tuned for the next video. It'll be a good one. Thanks for watching and keep it prime.